Now, the minority had their say, the majority had their way. Speaking loudly, 282 no less, kick-starting what could be a constitutional moment. Rigadi Gashagwa's continued hold of the office of the deputy president lies in the hand of the Senate, which has also put its process in motion as soon as it received the resolution from the National Assembly. Parallel to this, the deputy president is in court, hoping for some reprieve. So tonight we examine how we got to this point. Was there a way out for the deputy president? Are there missed opportunities that he could have capitalized on to avert what now seems inevitable? Why didn't the president step in to save his deputy? A man he painted in very attractive colors pre-general election in the year 2022. How did this situation degenerate to a level where the authority of the presidency came to question and its character put to test? Did Gashagwa have to get to this point? Did they have to go this direction? Did this disagreement have to get to the National Assembly? Well, all these questions coming a little too late for the process is currently underway. Our point tonight, however, is the relationship between the deputy president and his boss is irretrievably broken and Kenya cannot contemplate a situation where the two have to be forced by either the law or a division of parliament to work together. Now the parliament began a process they must be ready to conclude. In this first act, Kenyans have seen firsthand what a united august house can do. If they took that decision on behalf of the executive, woe unto them. If this was an independent decision based on facts, law, and the best interests of the country, then the National Assembly has demonstrated that they can shed off the rubber stamp tag and trade it with some level of independence and confidence that they can exert and exercise their authority devoid of manipulation and any form of direction from the executive, that they are not an appendage of the executive or the president. On this, Kenya be the judge. On the same breath, parliament has to make a deliberate effort towards actualizing the recall clause in the constitution. Now, Senator Moses Kajuang of the county of Homa Bay is proposing a legislative amendment to this end. Make it quick, Senator. And as we wait, it's worth noting that a three-judge bench had outlawed the sections of the Constitution, that of the Elections Act and the County Governments Act that made recall a near impossibility. Now, Justice or Justices Kanye Kimondo, George Odunga and Chacha Muita in a constitutional petition filed by Katiba Institute and Action Initiative back in the year 2016 made it possible for you to send your member of parliament home or to call them back home. And that is a good place to begin tonight. At Ken Mijunga across all social media platforms, let's take a look at our top stories tonight. 